Hi. It's been a while since I last posted as I've been a bit busy. Today I'll be continuing with my series of guides on the TensorFlow Object Detection API. A lot of you guys were asking about TensorFlow Lite in my other tutorial. In this video, you'll learn how to convert TensorFlow 2 model to TensorFlow Lite and additionally running object detection on the Raspberry Pi with TensorFlow Lite models. So, don't I already have a video about TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi? So I make another one. Well, TensorFlow Lite is significantly different than TensorFlow. It's optimized around mobile and edge devices like the Raspberry Pi. It allows for high performance, low latency, and small binary sizes even for resource limited devices. If you followed my last video, you might have experienced extreme loading times, even your Pi just shutting down during inference. TensorFlow Lite eliminates these issues entirely. Compared to a loading time of just over 3 minutes for a standard TensorFlow pre-trained model, it took a TensorFlow Lite model less than 1 hundredth of a second to load. After some calculations, it was approximately 5 million 693,400% faster in loading. Yes, you heard me right. 5,693,400% or 693,400% faster in loading times. Well, I've talked enough. Let's get started. So first, let's take a look on how to convert TensorFlow models to TensorFlow Lite. If you don't plan to convert a custom TensorFlow object detector, you can skip to this step with the Raspberry Pi tutorial. So before you continue, I'd highly recommend you take a look at my TensorFlow 2 custom object detection API video. In this video, I covered how to train a custom TensorFlow 2 object detector. Now this GitHub guide I've pulled up here is a written tutorial which contains the most up-to-date information that I've linked in the description. And before you continue, I'll be assuming that you've already installed Anaconda, set up the directory structure, compiled protos, and set up the TensorFlow object detection API, gathered training data, and trained your model without exporting. So the first step that we're going to want to do is exporting our model. If you followed my previous guide, your, uh, train your directory should now look something like this. Inside your Windows C drive, you should have your TensorFlow folder and your training demo directory. And inside your models, you should have my SSD MobileNet V2 FPM Lite containing all the checkpoint information of our model. And remember I said without exporting. This means in your exported models folder, you should have nothing except your .git ignore. So what we're going to want to do first is open up a new Anaconda terminal. In this terminal, we can activate the TensorFlow virtual environment that we defined earlier. And now we can cd to our training demo directory with cd and then this command. And then we can export our model by issuing python export tf, tf light graph tf2.py. Unlike my last tutorial, we're not going to be using exporter underscore main underscore v2.py because these models aren't convertible yet. Or they're never going to be convertible. But at the moment, TensorFlow Lite only supports SSD architected models. This means uh, you can only use SSD models excluding efficient debt. So if you're uh, using a pre-trained model to train your TensorFlow 2 custom object detector, make sure you're using an SSD one. You can take a look for more information about this in the TensorFlow 2 detection model zoo. So now let's export our model with this command. And this might take a minute, so I'll be right back when this is done. Now when this is finished, you should get something looking like this. And now inside our exported models folder, we should have my underscore TF light model. And in here we'll have our save model directory. And you might notice this isn't exactly in the uh, TF light model format just yet. So we're gonna have to actually convert this .pb file to .tf light with TensorFlow Nightly. What TensorFlow Nightly is, is a nightly build of TensorFlow that's updated with the newest features every single night. So to install TensorFlow Nightly, let's first close this Anaconda prompt. Then we can open up a new Anaconda terminal, and then we're going to want to create a new virtual environment. This virtual environment will avoid version conflicts with previously installed packages, and we can install the newest version of TF Nightly on here. Now once this is done, we can activate our virtual environment with conda activate tf light. 
And now we can install TF Nightly with pip install TF Nightly. Now this download also might take a while, so I'll be right back when this is all done. Now once TensorFlow Nightly is finished installing, you might notice a few errors, but you can ignore them for now. So now let's test our installation by issuing Python, then import TensorFlow as TF. And you can ignore this error because we only installed the CPU version. And this is another common error that I wanted to cover in this video. So to fix this error, you just actually have to install the previous version of NumPy. So this current version of NumPy, which is NumPy 1.19.4, does have a few issues. Oh, whoops. So instead of installing 1.19.4, we can install 1.19.3 and this issue should be resolved. And again, we can ignore these errors because we're not gonna be really using MXNet, so yeah. So now if we use Python and use import TensorFlow as TF, again, this we can ignore. This time everything should work fine. And when we print the tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore, we should get the version of tf nightly that we installed. For me, this is 2.5.0 from this date. And now we can exit the anaconda prompt and move on to the next step. Now we're gonna wanna convert our model to TensorFlow Lite. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we only have a saved model.pb file, which we're gonna have to convert to the other file format. So in my previous tutorial, I have added a script called convert to tflight.py. And this basically does everything for you. I've added a few options, which you can uncomment and you can take a look at what some of these arguments are for in the tflight um, conversion uh, page or conversion documentation. So the TensorFlow Lite Converter, there's various arguments you can give to the uh, Python API, but I've hashtagged what I found to not work. And basically, you can just run Python convert to tflight.py and everything should, or wait, let me switch to the right directory first. So, see, And now we can convert our model with Python convert to tflight.py. Whoops. And I'll be right back when this is done. So once this finishes running, you should get something that looks like this. And now inside your uh, tflight model folder, you should have your model.tflight. Now something to note here is the size of this file. If it's one kilobyte, that means something has definitely gone wrong. Because currently there's a ton of errors that are happening with TensorFlow Lite conversion. I was finding a lot of these myself before trying it out again. But this size will determine exactly if your file is working or not. And also it'll, be, it'll determine your, uh, uh, it'll determine how fast your model runs on the Raspberry Pi. So you can note that my model.tf light is only 4,000 kilobytes, which is an appropriate size, and you shouldn't get anything too big or too high. For example, 121,000 kilobytes would be something way too big, and maybe one kilobyte, again, would be something way too low. So now we can prepare our model for use. If you may remember from my previous tutorial, we had created our label map in C slash TensorFlow workspace training demo and annotations, you should have your label map.pb text. So for TensorFlow Lite, it has a, it has a different uh, format for the label map. So instead of a text editor, you can open up a new uh, window and paste your label map right here. So in our previous tutorial, I had used my pill detector and this was acetaminophen and ibuprofen. But with TensorFlow Lite, basically all you do is Take this, control C, and replace that. 
and just basically you list your labels in order. Control C, Control V. And this is our VR finish label map. And then we can save this as labels.txt. So you can save this in TensorFlow workspace training demo. Export models. Oh, whoops, wrong. TensorFlow workspace train demo exported models and you can save it in here and now inside of our tf light model folder here we have our models.tf light and our labels.txt that means our model is now ready for use on the raspberry pi now i'll be covering how to run tensorflow light models on the raspberry pi so if you haven't already, you should definitely set up your Raspberry Pi. I made a detailed video on how to do this. And then once you're done with that, you can SSH into your Raspberry Pi. Now we're gonna be getting updates and basically setting up our camera module to make sure we can run. So to do this, we can use sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get dist upgrade. And depending on how long ago you've set up or when was the last time you set up or updated your Pi, the time this will take varies. I'll be right back when this is all done. This took me about 10 minutes, but once this is done, you can now use sudo raspi config. Then navigate to interfacing options, or interface option, and go to camera, and then hit yes. And now you might have to reboot. So I'll do that and I'll be right back when this is Done. Now once you've restarted your Pi, you're going to want to SSH back into it. Whoops. And then you're going to clone my repository right here. Oh, whoops. Wrong terminal. And this name is a bit long, so I'm gonna move it. All right, or I'm gonna change the name to just TensorFlow. And we're gonna wanna install a virtual environment on our Raspberry Pi. So you can do this with sudo pip3 install virtual env. Then we can create a virtual environment called TensorFlow with Python minus or er, Python three minus m and TensorFlow. Now we can cd into this directory with cd TensorFlow. And then to activate our virtual environment, we can use source bin slash activate. And if you do uh, uh, exit this terminal, we're not gonna be in the virtual environment anymore. If you want, you can use this command, echo source tensorflow bin activate bash rc. And this will make it so that whenever you open up a new terminal, you're automatically gonna be in your tensorflow virtual environment. Now in our directory, you should now have all these files. And I've created an installation script to install all the prerequisites needed. So you can uh, run this by just using bash install prerequisites, whoops, uh, sh. Yes. And this also might take a bit, so I'll be right back and this is done. Now, once everything is installed, you should get the prerequisites installed successfully message. And now we can test out our installation of the TF Lite runtime module. So first, let's try it, type in Python, and then we can use import TF Lite underscore runtime as TF, and then print TF dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. And you should get 2.5.0. And now if uh, everything is working, we can run the program. 
So instead of, or I'm gonna use VNC viewer to run this because you can't run it with a uh, standard terminal. So VNC server. So now we can open up a new terminal, CD into TensorFlow. And if you use Python, TF, light, I can od.py. You should now be able to run object detection. At the moment, it'll be using the default uh, model that I've included with the repository. This is the uh, pre-trained TensorFlow model based on the MS Coco dataset. But I will show you guys how to use a custom TensorFlow model. So you can just use your, uh, uh, whatever uh, way you want to transfer the model onto your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna be using WinSCP because I like the SFTP client. So for the remote host name, just do Raspberry Pi, Pi, Raspberry. Update. And now you can go into wherever your um, models located for me again, TensorFlow workspace, training demo, export models, and then my TF Lite model. And here you have your model.tf Lite and your labels.txt. On the Raspberry Pi, you'll have TensorFlow models. And here you can just delete these. And then you can transfer these into here and as a replacement. And there we go, we're done. So if you have any issues, feel free to let me know in the comments or raise an issue in my GitHub repository. If you want, you can contact me through Discord. I'll be leaving my handle in the description. And until next time, bye.